Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I'm going to be taking a look at this interesting effect that I'm calling Inside the Matrix. So that probably looks crazily complicated, but you'll be very surprised to discover how simple it actually is and what an unusual technique we'll be using to make it. So let's take a look. So let's look at our project setup. I've gone with 1920 by 960, which gives us this nice widescreen look, which I think helps this project. Frame rate of 24 to give it that nice filmic look. I'm going with a duration of 10 seconds for the purposes of this tutorial, but for my demo, I use 20 seconds. So. The first thing I'm going to do is come over to the library and I've pre-typed some text, which I'm going to bring in here. I'm just going to turn on the overlays because I want to show you something important here. So I've got my grid going there as well so we can see where the center line is. Now, what we actually want is to set the baseline to zero so that the text is definitely sitting on that center line. And I'm also going to reduce that size down to 300. And the font I'm using is Futura Condensed Extra Bold. Then I'm going to come over to Appearance. I'm going to turn on 3D text. I'm going to set the depth to 150. And then I want to make sure that we've got shiny plastic, plastic shiny. And for the color, I'm going to go with this lead, so dark gray. So let's just turn off those overlays. So what we're going to be doing is applying a filter to this group. And for the purposes of getting us going, I'm just going to set it to fixed resolution and set the fixed width and height to 3000. We will be coming back and adjusting that width in just one second. But next we're going to add the filter that's going to create the whole effect. And this is one you've probably looked at before and not really found much useful, but today we're going to find a use for it. It's stylized and slit scan. So let's drop that on there to the group. Let's have a speed of 50. Let's have a perspective of 0 0.06. We don't want any glow. And I'm going to set the mix value down to 50. Now you'll notice that we've got this sort of dividing line up here, which really wants to be sitting on the bottom of the text. And to fix that, what we're going to have to do is adjust the fixed width. So I'm going to scroll in this field here until that line meets the other one there in the center. So for this particular Example, we are going with 3300 for that fixed width, but it will all depend on the actual size of your text. So then we are going to add filters, color and threshold. We're going to set the threshold value to 0.33 and the smoothness to 0.4. And maybe you can start to see how this might all work. So I'm just going to come back to my slit scan center and I'm going to add to the Y and oscillate behavior. I'm going to set the amplitude to 0.5 and the speed to 20. And what that's going to give us is this crazy animation. But we're not actually going to be using that as an animation. What we're going to be doing is be picking a selection of frames from that animation. So to do that, we're going to have to use a process that I've shown quite a few times before. And that's to make a clone of this group, make clone layer, turn off the original group. And from the clone, we're going to do object replicate. For the shape, we're going to choose line. We're going to zero out these two X values, the two X start and ends. We're going to have 10 points. We're going to turn on 3D. We're going to come down here. We're going to turn off play frames. And for the source frame offset, that one there, we're going to have seven frames. And then I'm going to open up the start point here. And I'm going to have for that Z start point, a thousand. So maybe you can start to see how this is working. We've got these different layers that have been selected from that slit scan operation. But if you scrub along the timeline, you'll see that it's a still. We're not actually using any of the animation from that slit scan. We're literally just using it as a way of picking a variety of different frames. So to get some basic animation, what we're going to do is target this Z start point and add a ramp behavior to it. And we are going to set the start value to 1500. That will give us this effect here. Obviously, we're not framed up terribly well, so we need to add in a camera. So let's set this group to 3D. 
and let's add a camera. Just going to come back to the first frame so we can see where we are. So then what I'm going to do is to the camera, I'm going to add basic motion move and I'm going to open up the position and set that Z position to a thousand. So the direction is two and we're going to look like this. So we're flying through all those layers that are all different and we're ending up there. So we actually want to probably just move it down a little bit on Y. So there we go, we're adjusting that Y position. So maybe 65 is good for that. All of this is going to depend on the size of the text that you're using. So if you're using exactly the same text as me, then you'll be fine. But you might find that different size texts, you'll need to make different sorts of adjustments. So the next thing I want to do is add a couple of sweeps to this camera. So let's add a sweep. Let's first of all have a tilt. So switch to tilt X. Let's go from eight to two. And what that will allow us to do is to come from underneath like that. It's going to be a lot nicer. And then let's also add in another sweep just to give us also a bit of a roll. So let's switch to roll Z and let's have start of five and an end of negative three. And I think just this bit of a a roll around like that just to add some interest to it. The next thing I want to do is add some lights. So add a light. I'm just going to position this light negative 960 on X, positive 720 on Y and 750 on Z. And you can maybe just faintly see how it's lighting up this left hand side. I'm just going to increase that intensity to 400 to get us going. And I'm going to set the fall off to one. So then I'm going to duplicate this light, right click duplicate, and I'm just going to move it over to the other side. So positive 960 on X, negative 720 on Y. And I'm just going to give both of these some color. So this one here, let's go for something like this, I think. And the first one, let's go the opposite direction, somewhere like that, I think. And then I'm going to add an, a new light. So maybe just duplicate this one here. And I'm going to make this one sort of that, I think. I'm also going to set its fall off to three. I'm going to come over to its position, zero at the X. And for the Z, I'm going to have 1500. So what this is going to do is it's going to light up the front face like that. So before I tweak the lights any further, what I want to do is I want to take this replicator and I want to add a color levels to it. And I want you to see what happens. We've now got this rather nice fogging effect, which if you turn that on and off, that looks really nice, I think. And literally, I'm not actually doing anything with it. We could actually sort of use it to crunch it up a bit but we'll leave it there for now. So let's come back, back to this first light here. Let's set its intensity down to zero and let's add to it a ramp behavior. And let's set its initial value. If we come to the beginning, maybe to 500. Yes, I think that's good. And let's set the end value to 100. So it'll start to fade away a bit. And let's do the same thing with this other light here. Let's again come to the front and let's set the intensity down to zero and add a ramp. And let's choose a value for this. Let's maybe go for 600 for this. And let's come to the end and choose a value, maybe 100 for that as well is probably quite good. And let's also have a think about this light here. Let's also set its intensity down to zero. Let's add a ramp. Let's have a start value of zero. And let's come to the end and decide how intense we want it. Maybe 650, maybe even 750. And what I think I might do with this light is animate its Y position. So I'm going to zero out the Y. And again, well, let's add a ramp behavior. And let's start at negative 1000 and end at 720. And that's just going to make it more interesting like that, I think, because it's rising up through the letters and then fading off a little bit. Another thing I want to do at this point is to come over to the library and come to generators. And let's just grab a color solid, drop it into the background there. Let's come to properties, make it really big. Let's go for 500. So it covers everything like that. And we can pick our color. I really quite like that default, but I think it's a bit too, a bit too much. Let's just knock back the saturation a bit like that. It's probably quite good. So that, that really helps just to have that in the background there. We turn that on and off. It's looking really nice. So then let's come back to our group that's got our replicator in it. 
Let's come to filters and just give it a little bit of neon glow. So glow neon. And let's set the outer glow all the way up, inner glow all the way up, and then just knock back this mix value to something like 20 maybe. And let's just bump up the edge intensity to 15. So maybe that's mixed down to 10 is enough. Don't want to go crazy with it. So then what I want to do is I want to add in a copy of the text so that it'll actually start to solidify a little bit. So what we'll need to do is to come back down into our text group and we're going to duplicate that text and I'm going to drag it out to the top of this group here, in fact, above that neon. So obviously we want this to track along with our main text. So we can come to the Z position and add a ramp behavior to it. And we're going to start with 2375 and end with a thousand. And now hopefully you can see that is tracking along fairly well. So then let's set the blend mode of this to multiply and let's add to it a neon filter. And for some reason it popped onto the group rather than the, the layer. Just drag it back onto the layer. Don't know why that happened. And let's set the intent edge intensity up to say 75. And that gives us this quite interesting effect like that. And we could, if we wanted, come into the text and adjust this color here that we chose originally like that. And we could even just add in a little bit of color like that, I think. And so there is the effect. For my version, I added in some particles just to give it a little bit of extra depth. But I think I've shown you enough to be getting on with. So thanks for watching and see you again soon.